Hello, this is Wes at Bad Seed Games, and we're going to be picking up in the side quest for a stretchy bone rig that is uh, compatible with Unity. And where we left off in the last one is going to, we had the uh, point system set up, so let's get the, uh, so now that we've got the points set up, let's start getting the bones going. Alright, in order to do this, we're going to just use a standard, regular, ordinary single bone. Now, in order to avoid that whole hierarchy scale issue, instead of creating six bones with one nub at the end and they're all linked together, you could do that if you wanted to do that just in Max, but for exporting to Unity, we, that hierarchy information is going to cause us some issues. So let's just make individual bones. And I'm going to need six in total, so let's make five more. All right. Yeah, let's just move them up here. Now, first step that we need to do is, um, so I'm going to start with the positional, positionally constraining them to the points along the path. So, say, let's highlight the first bone, not the, not the bone and the nub, just the bone. And go into Animations, Constraints, Position Constraint, and select point one. Let's do that with uh, the next bone, so Animation, Constraints, Position, point two. And let's continue. And I'm going to do that as I pause. Alright, so I've gone ahead and I've positionally constrained each bone to its respective point. And let's, uh, let's drop in a couple keyframes so that we can s make sure that we've got some uh, motion information to work with. So it's there. All right. So as you can see, they're now positionally constrained along the path, along the uh, points which are along the path. All right. Okay. Now, since I've basically created these bones arbitrarily with no actual um, measurements and such like that, if we were to use them with the look at constraint and the scaling and making them stretchy, we could get some issues. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to show you how I can fi how I would fix them. Now, if you were to make these on an actual rig, like an actual rig that you're going to use in production, then you're going to want to make sure that you're a little bit more um, accurate in where you place your control points, where you place your spline, where you place your bones. You're going to want to be a lot more uh, particular because it's a good it's a good practice to get into. But again, since this is not meant to be a tutorial, this is just like me kind of showing some of the things that I've been kind of figuring out. You don't have to worry too much now. If you, one thing that I figured out in order to get, to get around that, you could basically just take the bone and scale it around and such like that. But that's going to alter the actual transformation matrix. So I've got the bone tools window open. You can find that in the animation pull down. I'm going to turn bone edit mode on, making sure auto key is off because they don't like to talk to each other. And I'm going to take bone edit, edit mode on. I'm going to take the nub of each bone and I'm going to align it positionally. I don't need the orientation. It doesn't look like it's taking it. But I'm going to align it to the next point in the stack. So do that. Just gonna do that one more time with the align function. I'm going to pause it here and do that for the rest of the bones. All right, so I've gone ahead and I've done that for the alignment, so which that should give us the basic, um, the, uh, the, the, the basic um, information we need. Next thing that I'm going to do, now I don't know if this is something that is absolutely necessary, but I'm going to do it just because I think it, it might help, is to, I'm going to reset the stretch and the scale on all of the bones. And when that's done, turn off bone edit mode, close the window, and let's see what gives that gives us. Well, they're certainly uh, rotated on the first frame, but they're still not looking at it. So let's fix that. So I'm just going to drop in a couple more frames. What I'm going to need to do for this is so I'm going to stretch it out just a bit. There. You'll you'll see why in just a moment. All right, so as with the previous uh, stretchy bone thing, I'm going to go into, now that we've got the positions, we need the orientation. So highlight the first bone, 
animation constraints and a look at constraint and looking at the next point in the stack. I'm going to turn off view line length absolute and I'm going to turn the up node off of world and make it choose its home point. So again, just to make sure that you can see me doing it, constraints, look at constraint, the next bone, looking at the next in the stack, turn off the view line like that, absolute. Now the view line, you don't have to worry too much about it. I'm doing this more for cosmetic reasons, but you can kind of play around with it and such like that. But I don't want that in there. So, All right, so I'm just going to pause it here, and I'm going to do that with the rest of the bones. Okay, so I've done that, and now as you can see, as we as we uh, go along, they're looking at, and they're positionally constrained. All right, so the next step that I said, now this is where it's going to start to diverge. If you wanted to use a game engine rig, you're going to have to do a little bit of things differently than what I'm going to do right now. So, I'm just going to pause one second. All right, so I just basically created a save file because I'm going to want a point to revert back to once I finish doing this. But I'm going to show you how to do it in a max system. Like before, you take the nub bone, you animation constraints, position constrain it to the next one in the stack. And since these bones have been set to be default as the, uh, the uh, scale, it's now stretching. It depends on how you have it set up. Yours might have none on, yours might have scale on, yours might have squash on. I'm not exactly sure why, but I'm going to um, take that bone and turn the squash on. I'm going to do that with the same because I want that squash and stretch look. All right, so now that that's done, let's go through and positionally constrain. I'm going to pause and do that for the rest. All right, so I've gone ahead and I've done that. And I actually realized one thing. There's one more step that I need to do. So uh, the, the, the next step is to basically do the orientation. Now, since the up nodes are now controlled, of each bone are now controlled by the points, these points are only positionally constrained. They're not orientationally constrained, so they don't have much rotation data to work from. So let's fix that. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is the process that I have is I have this point here, which represents the shoulder, this point here, which represents the elbow, and this point for the hand. They're all going to be orientationally constrained 100% to their respective control points. So highlight the point that you want to constrain, animation constraints, orientation constraint to the point. Do that with this one. And so for the hand. So constraints, orientation. All right, well, that's good, but these don't have control points to work with, and that's okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically take these points and highlight both of them, because I figured out that you can actually drop on constraints with multiples highlighted. So highlight both of them and click animation constraints, and then I'm going to orientationally constrain them to the shoulder. Wait, nope. Scratch that. Just give me one second. Sorry about that. I don't want them constrained orientationally to the shoulder. And you'll see why in just a moment. So animation constrain orientationally to the point. So point one. And I'm going to drop on another orientation constraint and have it on point four, which is the elbow. So let's uh, double check, make sure that I did that correctly. Yeah, it's got a good start. All right, so let's. It's going to clear out these animation keyframes because. Oops. Come on, come on. There you go. Okay. It's going to pop that here so that we can see okay. some uh, rotation. All right, there it is. Now, as you can see, these points seem to be rotating at the same amount. I'm going to turn on the local move gizmo so that you can see 
that they're essentially the same rotation, which is midway between this point and this point. Now, if you only have one point between, like two bones to the forearm and the uh, lower arm, then this 50-50 this, this would work, but we need to kind of alter that. Now, the weighting when it comes to the weights, it's a value based of a maximum of 100, but if you have, for example, more than, if it all tallies up in here in the weight value of more than 100, it'll normalize it down to 100. So, say this point, I want it to be more constrained to 0.1, so highlight 0.1, and let's drag that up to 100. So, instead of having to worry about typing in 33.33 for the uh, 0.4 and 66.66 for 0.1, you could just scale them up and down and it should normalize them for you. And I had auto key on and that's not what I wanted. Okay. So let's do the same for this one. However, instead of it being 100% to 0.1, it's going to be 100% to 0.4. So now that we scroll over here, as you can see, let's turn off the grid. It is a nice smooth rotation. Now this orientation constraint is in all three axes. So uh, it's now giving us something that the uh, up node can work with. Now you could see there there might be some issues with regards to this along down the road if you're using some really complex and convoluted uh, rotations and such like that. This is not meant to really address that. This is just to kind of get the process into Unity. So, and like I said, this uh, side quest series isn't meant to really be a tutorial series. It's just meant to be kind of a stream of consciousness, I guess. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to do the same for these ones. Highlight both points. Animation constraint orientationally to 0.4. And orientationally constrained to 0.7. As you can see, they both now snapped. But let's adjust them. So 0.4 on this one is the bigger, and 0.7 on this one is the uh, bigger. So now, as you can see, it's got a nice rotation going. All right. OK, so the clarification when it comes to the issue with regards to a max rig versus a unity rig the difference between the rigging system that we're going to be using for Unity rig is the nubs are not going to be positionally constrained to the actual points themselves. That's all going to be controlled with uh, wiring parameters and such. But as it stands, this right now, this is a basic spline, IK, bendy, stretchy rig. Now, you could probably take this and really push it further and make it really really fancy and snazzy and nice but we that that's a little bit more than what I'd need it for and there's one thing I do want to take a look at so I'm just gonna highlight the bones I'm gonna turn on the fins the front fin not the side fins just the front fins you can do that in the animation bone tools again bone tools you're gonna learn, learn to love that so front fin and as you can see we now have a uh, a fin to look at. This will give us an indication of the actual rotation because this is why. Since this point here is the, the since the point that's driving the uh, up node of this is 100% constrained to this control point, there might be some cases where you could get some stretching and tearing and as you can see with this it's also flipping the reason why it's flipping is since it's using a constraining system, it's trying to get the uh, the value of the two points that it's trying to be constrained to. And if, for example, I think it's either the 360 mark or the 180 degree mark. Uh, let's put on local. So, yep, it's the 180 mark. So as you can see, it's um, snapping. Now this is a limitation of the actual system itself. So it's you, if you wanted to use this rig exactly as it is, you're going to have to be keeping in mind the uh, rotations. 
Now, I wouldn't be surprised if there are ways to actually get around this and to or to overcompensate or factor that in. But to be honest, it's been a while since I've made a rig this this uh, reliant on the orientations. And if you wanted to check out one of Ball's classes, I'm not going to make a promise that he could, but he might be able to show you a couple ways to kind of get around that. Because I think he did show us a couple of things. But then again, that was in my college days, and those were years ago years ago. So, as you can see, it snaps. I think that that might just be... Well, yeah. But as you can see, it's not a perfect rig. It has its flaws. It's It's got its limitations. But for what I'm trying to do, it, this, is, this is good enough. Okay. Now, I'm not going to get into the actual wiring parameters on this one because that one's going to be really, really hefty and kind of complicated and such like that. And when it comes down to it, I'm going to give you the warning now. I'm honestly going to give you the warning in the next video, but when you're playing around with things like expression controllers and wire parameters, if you make mistakes, you can cause, you can cause Max to crash or you can cause it to be to corrupt your scene. I, I'm not exactly sure why or something like that. I think it's... There are, there are better minds out there that could probably explain it. So when it comes to wiring the parameters, when we get to the next video, I'm going to strongly suggest that you watch it at least twice. Not I'm not saying this so that I can pad my viewing statistics, don't worry about that. But it's just so that you can absolutely be certain that you know what we're doing because one misstep can result in you having to scrap your entire file. So, but I, I'm, not, I'm not blaming Max or anything else like that because it's, you're literally, you're reaching in and you're playing around with the guts of how it works at its fundamental level. So, it makes perfect sense why it would, uh, why er enough errors can cause, like, serious problems. So, I'm just gonna leave this one off for now, and we're gonna go into the, uh, and we're gonna go into the uh, making the uh, system work for Unity in the next video. So until then, if you like what I've got going so far, feel free to rate this video as you, however you like. If you want to leave a comment, uh, words of encouragement, or points to consider, or maybe even uh, I think you're doing this the wrong way. Here's how I would do it. Absolutely. If you want to leave something that's if you want to leave, if you want to leave a critique or criticism, please try and keep it constructive. That 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 would certainly help. And hey, if you like, if you like, if you want, maybe subscribe. That'd be awesome too. I would I would certainly appreciate it. <laughs> but other than that, I'll catch you in the next video. And yeah, bye.